good spiritual momentum. Most believers want breakthrough. And often, we, often believers never see it. And let's say now, this rocket was going into space, as we pictured Bert before, and it starts off, it goes up, but then it slows down. And, so, and then it start, tries to go again. It's never going to make it. When you go back and forth and back and forth, you lose momentum. With momentum comes power. And here's this crux of the matter. You want that breakthrough, you need the momentum of God. If you mess up, we said well, you're more likely to mess up again in that sin. You don't have to, but that's the natural course. If you do well in something, you're more likely to do well again. If you do well a lot in something, you're more likely to do it again. You've got good momentum. If you give in to a sin, we saw it, that's that way. If you resist the sin, you're more likely to resist it the next time. And if you resisted it two times, you're more like, even more likely to do it a third time. In fact, when you're tempted again, it's going to be you already have a spiritual defense. I've spoken sometimes of someone we knew great and greatly respected, Richard Wormbrand, who had lived a great life for God in, in the underground church of Romania. He had great momentum from a life of godly choices that he made, all those godly practices, worshiping God in his presence every day. It built momentum. Choosing the right thing again and again builds momentum. Imagine being him, having all that momentum in back of your life. It's going to propel you forward to live a great life or walk a great walk. You need that. You need great spiritual momentum. But what, what if you say, well, I don't have it. I don't have that. I have a so-so walk, a so-so history or a history of failure, or not resisting sin, or giving in to the same thing again and again, or not stepping out, and I'm not doing what I know is right, and what I know is right I don't do, what then? Well, there's good news. Because even if you have no momentum, there is a way to acquire it. These are the secrets now, keys, very practical and spiritual, to obtaining momentum, supernatural, spiritual momentum, to have the breakthrough that God calls for your life. First, th first secret. You can turn to it or you can just, you can mark it down or keep it and keep note. First Thessalonians 5.21 says this, test all things but hold to what is good. Test all things but cling to what is good. First key of momentum. Well, let me tell you, there was a man who was always positive, always upbeat, always encouraging in the Lord, always blessed. And someone asked him, what was your secret? What's your secret? How can you do this? Because you've got problems like everybody else. He said, well, I have, it's, it is as if I have two pockets every day. One is a good pocket. The other pocket has a hole in it. He says, during the day, whatever is bad, I put in the pocket with holes in it. Any bad word, any bad feeling, I let it just pass out. But whatever is good, I put in the good pocket, I hold on to it. I dwell on it. And at the end of the day, no matter what happened during that day, I only have a pocket full of blessings. In Philippians, it says, whatever is good, whatever is praiseworthy, good, excellent, lovely, dwell on these things. That, there's an inverse of that. There's an opposite. That means whatever is not good, do not dwell on. Whatever is not praiseworthy, do not. Whatever is not good, you let go of. You let go in one way, out the other. A negative thought, right away, out. In fact, Messiah, it is central in him. Anything bad, you bring to him and you let it go. You cover it with his blood. When you let it go as if it never was, what is good, you hold on to it. That doesn't mean you don't deal with problems. You do, but not with negativity. So what does that mean for momentum? The first secret, is, the first secret here is holding to what is good and choosing what you, what you receive in your life. Because what is it, this is the thing. Bad things have bad momentum. Bitterness has bad momentum. Fear has bad momentum. Good things have good momentum. So if something negative happens and you're always dwelling on it, you're holding to this bad momentum. You're even reinforcing it. When you mess up and you sin, you give it to God, you cover it with His blood, and you be done with it. And you thank God that you are now cleansed of it. You only dwell on God. There's no momentum anymore to fail only momentum of His grace. When you start doing this every day, whatever is good, cling to what is good. Hold to what is good. Abstain from what is evil. Not just evil sin, but evil dwelling on evil. Evil thoughts. Evil, evil everything. 
you will eliminate more and more bad momentum, the momentum of fear and failure and sin and bondage. Let the bad go. Say goodbye to it. But even what appears to be bad, you take it as, no, Lord, I, I, you mean all things for good, so I can even thank you for that. So even that thing I can think about, I can, I can give thanks to you, God, everything becomes good. You see how it works? You know, say someone came against you. You bring it to the Lord instead of getting all wrapped up and, and not losing sleep over it. You, let, you give it to God. You let him take it. Things didn't work the way you wanted. Okay, you let it go, Lord, and you get on with God. Give thanks to God. Get on with God. Get, dwell on the blessing. You messed up. You fell. That's what you give it to God. It's not holy to dwell on how rotten you are all the time. It is holy to bring it to God and repent of it and take his grace from it. Bring it under the blood and give thanks to God that you are cleansed. So, but something good happened today. Hold on to it. It's a blessing from God. Even the bad is a blessing. But you give thanks to God. You look to the good in all things. You may even have made, say, you know, say you made progress in an area, then you mess up. And then, you know, some of you, you've experienced this. You're doing good in a certain area. And then you fall in that area. And then you, you, you just, it just messes you up completely. And you don't know what to do. You're messing up and you go back into that. Instead, say, wait a minute. Let me, I'm, that, that happened. I give it to God. It is gone. And now, but I'm holding on to the fact that look at all the progress God gave me up to that point. And take that and all of a sudden the bad momentum is gone. You have good momentum for holiness. At the end of the day, you just changed your momentum. Instead of ending with anger or fear or anxiety, you ended with praise and worship. And that's good momentum. That's going to give you power to overcome. Next key, the mustard seed principle.